Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Well, that's a bit loud for you. I do apologise. How are we all doing? Yes, I am back. <laughs> that's right. And so are one hub. It is season number three of ACC. And can you tell I'm happy I'm back broadcasting this race tonight? I certainly am joining me. As you can see on screen, the co-commentating legend. And that is Mr. Christian Romano joining me this evening. Hi John, uh, <laughs> hi everyone, and uh, welcome everyone to to tonight's nice race on uh, on One Up Racing. It's going to be an absolute cracker, Laguna Seca, home of everyone's favourite Dr. Neil Bender, lives not too far from that track at all. We've got Laguna Seca tonight, we've had Snetterton, oh, or perhaps I should have said, uh, Snetterton had won her racing last week, Milden, ouch. Uh, Snetterton was last week, it was uh, Laguna Sega tonight. We've got a double sprint race at Zandvoort with the all the new rules that were brought in, or sorry, that have been brought in by one hub. Nothing to do with me, I am simply a mouthpiece. Uh, Zandvoort for the double sprint race, Mount Panoramas to come, Mizano, Barcelona, Ulton Park. Paul Ricard, I am coming round to that track like you would not believe. Uh, obviously, everything's moved. Why is everything suddenly moved? Uh, everything suddenly moved, so let me just grab something that we can. Tell you what, let's go over the results because we've definitely got them. We'll quickly do that. We've still got two and a half minutes of practice. Uh, looking over the GT3 results, you can see what I mean by Owen Milden. He did take pole position. Uh, only managed third overall. Go back and watch it. The only thing better than the racing uh, was the commentary. Uh, so Milden in second, Floppy Fox, uh, in third, sorry, Floppy Fox, was it rounded? out the podium, uh, those three setting the pace early door, APX Rogue rightfully so, getting himself the driver of the day award, and in the GT4s, was it any surprise at all, that it was indeed the car mentalist show, and has that changed over? Uh, yes, I was in the GT Force. Car Mentalist absolutely ruling the roost as Car Mentalist does. I was actually thinking to myself, if he wins again, we're going to be interviewing him. How do you interview someone that constantly keeps on winning with a smile on your face? Because he is legitimately amazing behind the wheel of a car. Uh, so it was Car Mentalist, as you can see, took top spot. And it was ERT's Arno in second position, great drive there, and Philip Bodal, who took third, so one of the new names on the top of the tree, and uh, from what I managed to catch from work last week, Chromadex, that was quite the opening exchanges uh, for our drivers in the first race. Uh, yeah, race one, as always, uh, is the great beginning of the series, so everyone w wants to show the pace as soon as possible, and sometimes... Uh, you want to show it too soon, like without any 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 heat on your tires for doing a metaphor with the, uh, with the race track. Some <laughs> drivers actually <laughs> lost the opportunity on the British track mostly because of uh, not enough, maybe not enough experience with the back markers because there has been an incident uh, that has declared the two main positions. Uh, which was uh, Michael Gallo and uh, the McLaren of, uh, of Corrado. The McLaren of, uh, they actually went in touch uh, with some back markers, and I think just for not for a big, uh, for a big mistake, but mostly because of it's a new format. New format means new rules, and you also need to uh, uh, keeps uh, keeps in mind. You have to keep in mind that something has to change in your driving style. But it was an extraordinary round, mostly because, well, Car Mentalist uh, has made a round on his own. Well, not completely on his own. There was actually a, uh, a great surprise uh, because Philip actually uh, challenged him for the, for the World 60 Minutes and just a little mistake uh, uh, confined him into third position. While in GT3, there has been uh, the name that I was talking about just uh, before the, the race start of APX Drog, because he actually last season he didn't show exactly how uh, how good he was, mostly for some minor mistakes, uh, bad luck or such. And first race, first win, bam, instantly. He immediately showed that effectively he is good, and also the Audi is good, so reason more to to put it uh, to put him 
maybe on one of the five refugees duty free tonight. Yeah, could well be. It would be. Uh, yeah, you'd have to be a, a staunch supporter of some of the other drivers to bet against APX Rogue tonight. It's a great track. And I actually noticed, I know that you're going to focus on some of the interviews as well that the drivers have done. They're actually just pulling out on track. So let me see if I can remember how this works now. And, um, ba -da -bam. Uh, yeah, the course through, this is not a track that Rogue is afraid of in any way, shape or form. And you read the, uh, the interview that you did there. Uh, Chromadex, he is more than looking forward uh, to racing around here and the corkscrew is a corner he relishes uh, rather than fears, which uh, isn't always the case uh, around this track, certainly. Yeah, many drivers, uh, uh, there is like a 50-50 the drivers for the corkscrew because uh, it is uh, an incredible uh, peculiarity of the track. It's basically known just for it. And some of the drivers are... Uh, are pretty scared by it, by mostly the fact that uh, you have just one line, you can't put any any line uh, on your own, like on some turns, you have one line, if you if you miss it, it's done. Uh, Apex Rogue actually doesn't uh, really fear it, mostly because, uh, well, uh, seeing from his interview, uh, he basically said that he, he has already been in the car too many times, so probably in the race it won't happen. Which there we go. Which is fair enough. Uh, yep, get all your yeah. mistakes out of the way and practice Chroma Dicks. That is why my practice sessions, uh, usually after my practice sessions, you can actually go around and count the number of walls that the paint's on it. That's how dedicated I am uh, to finding the truck limits. <laughs> every scratch. <laughs> uh, every every scratch, yeah. yeah. Just check it. You, you've got to find the limits. And, of course, uh, check the safety of the barriers for other drivers, Chroma Dicks. I'm performing a public yeah. service, I like to think. <laughs> People need to thank you. <laughs> they do. What if a barrier is not unsa is not safe? You're there for Ex them. Exactly. I'm there for them. I'm there for them. Um, but I tell you, this uh, it's funny that we're talking about safety and barriers. This, of course, is uh, the old 1950s road track held back at Pebble Beach originally. Uh, the new course founded in 1957. Uh, believe it or not, that's years before even I was born uh, for sports car event, which was won by Pete Lovely. In a Ferrari. Need we say any more about the history of this track? I think not. Uh, but we will. Of course, uh, extra imaginative on the names. We've got uh, turn one, uh, the Andretti hairpin, then turn three, turn four, turn five, turn six. Well, we've got their house straight. Uh, turn seven, the court's going to turn nine through eleven. There is a turn eight A, so we did get extra imaginative down at the bottom of there love to hear it. Just making sure that's not someone telling me off or someone I've not done wrong. There we go. We're on board with Carmen Lister setting. Uh, they're out laps at the moment. In fact, yeah, that's them on the road. They're going to start setting times um, very shortly. Uh, down at the bottom right-hand side of the screen, there you can see uh, the liveries. The guys and gals are all teamed up. GT4s and GT3 drivers. Ten GT3s, ten GT4s. A couple of drivers missing this evening. Uh, but we'll still have a decent sized grid and some good battles going on as the GT4s still said. Uh, yeah, it's gratuitous card mentalist, but I mean, it's. What else do you want me to do? The guy is. He's returning champion and he's absolutely stomping. He's coming down the corkscrew, coming along the corkscrew now. Must be fun in those GT4s. They're absolute tanks, as Chromadix was uh, pointing out last week. These cars are 80% road car, 20% race car, whereas the GT3 Big Brethren's. Uh, they are, in fact, 80% race car and 20% road car. Well, supposed to be. They're pretty much road cars in name only. There's, I'm not sure what 20% <laughs> is a road car. The shape and the name, uh, I think, is about it. Uh, but it is the GT4s out on track. I've totally lost my own train of thought. There. Oh, yes, of course, we're going to talk about car mentalist on provisional pole. 131.638. Khalifa in second, Bowers in third. Uh, Rage Man and Badger Man as well. I've actually seen Badger Man on Twitch a few times doing the old Formula One. So it's interesting to me that he's chosen GT4s. There's a quick question for you, actually, Chromadix. You know this is completely out of left field. We've got sponsors to go over. Um, and we've got prizes to be won. But we'll do that um, after qualifying. Uh, but yeah, for me, that was an interesting choice. Chromadix. You've got a driver that's come predominantly from Formula One. He's done commentary. He's done racing. So... He knows a bit of both. He comes to a game like ACC and his first competitive league, he picks the GT4. 
Now, you were waxing lyrical last week about how much you can actually throw these cars around like a madman. Is that, the, I mean, does, does, it seems like a weird choice to me to go from Formula 1s to GT4s when you've got the GT3s there. What's your take on that one? Uh, Formula, we have to start the fact that Formula 1, uh, this is a not take, so feel free everyone to shoot me. But... <laughs> Horse's head on the bed. Yeah. <laughs> the Formula One game isn't really a simulator. It's more an arcade game. I I will be honest with you. Okay, uh, I don't okay. feel like uh, a Def One game is a real simulator. So just coming in to Corsa means that you have another uh, another library of physics to learn. Uh, okay. You have uh, a different uh, aero pattern because these cars are. Even the GT3 are less aerodynamic than the Formula 1 car for most reasons. They have more, they have more weight, uh, they have less power, uh, they have less aero. Uh, you can go side by side uh, more frequently, you can carry on damages without any problem. Choosing the GT4 over the GT3 means that he has even less power, even less uh, uh, aerodynamic, even less everything. And it's actually a good choice because you are able to learn the game easily. Uh, I, I explain it better. We just no, listen, car, you've eh? honestly just put me right in my place. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, this proves why people like Chromadex, Christian Romano, and the co commonality are absolutely vital. I'm sitting here thinking, why is this? And he's just explained absolutely beautifully that, yeah, coming over from an. A, was it a Simcade? So we'll call it. I must have gone yeah. Turismo over to someone like this, yeah, so yeah, no, now you've opened my eyes, you're probably right actually, 100%, uh, Chrome, because that would definitely be the thinking behind it, um, he's fifth at the moment, what would you have chosen? I mean, if you, I'm thinking, from the sounds of it, you actually really, really, really do like these GT4 cars, I don't go on with them myself, but you are massively in love with these things, aren't you? Yes. Yep. <laughs> Straight away. Just, yep, these are amazing cars. I want them all the time, Raven. <laughs> they, they are amazing, mostly because uh, they, are, they are more fun to, to drive. Uh, GT3, you have to calculate Oof. every single line, every single setup, someone died. No, Eddie's, Eddie's, Eddie's on pole position. Ah, yeah. Eddie's on pole True. position in the BMW. Wow. Nice! So there we go, the BMW. So, in your knowledge of the GT4s, actually, let's go for that one, Christian. Throw you under the bus with a monster quest as well. Out right, with the GT4s, which ones are likely to do well here at Laguna Seca? Because this is, let's face it, the American brand's hatch, uh, almost. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see which cars do well. BMW and Porsche leading the way at the moment. Uh, but which one do you reckon is going to be better around here? Uh, probably... Uh, any singular of the rear engine one can have some uh, uh, some more abilities, mostly because uh, they mm, they are more agile. And Laguna Seca is one of the ta of the. Um, but basically, yeah, it's a very edge. Uh, the the best the better way to describe Ooh. it is a very edge for for G for uh, for the American people. And uh, ooh, number four, and number forty-three went. Carmentalist, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's uh, he was a bit quick coming into the. I'm oh, sorry, my apologies. Uh, he was a lot quicker than the driver in front of him. Uh, I think there was perhaps a slight miscommunication as who was going which way. One shimmied when they should have shaked. One shaked when they should have shimmied, and it was a whole lot of gravel on the tyres for Carmentalist, which means. Oh, he's just been overtaken again. I tell you what, he's got a lot of dirt on his tyres as he came across the start-finish line. That wasn't not an optimal amount of acceleration as he came Ooh, across the start-finish line. Yeah, so I was just saying, yeah, so Thomas think Carmelis is really going to struggle uh, to get a lap in after the start of this one. I love to see the one-hub drivers are making sure it's going to be interesting, right? Because imagine Carmelis does start down in third. In fact, he could find himself uh, a lot further down than in third. Hi to everyone in the chat, by the way. My name's uh, John Wright. I'm the overexcitable streamer that people seem to enjoy uh, getting onto their broadcasts. <laughs> I will come and say hi to you all. Uh, we'll talk about sponsors and things as well. Let me just quickly hey, change to that screen. Hopefully you guys and gals can all still see that. 
Badgerman crosses line. Oh, and he's done it with seven seconds left to go. It is a very short lap round here, even for the GT4s. We're going to see nowhere near the amount of gap we saw last week. I believe it was 10.9 seconds roughly. It was back on. Um, 10.9 seconds between pole, pos uh, between pole position in the GT3s and pole position in the GT4s. Uh, we're probably going to see nowhere near that. It's going to be more like a five or six second gap uh, with it being a much shorter lap. And the GT4 is getting just about enough low end acceleration to get them along these start finish straights. We are on board with Badger Man. Uh, hopefully, you guys can see the beautiful liveries uh, from the team championship. In fact, while the GT3s are out setting their lap, let's have, let's have a quick look at the prizes first. The Constructors Championship uh, isn't there. So that one hasn't uploaded, they apologise. The Drivers' Championship, the top three in the Drivers' Championship will win £25 of Amazon or uh, PlayStation Vouchers, their choice, of course. Uh, the GT3s and the GT4 classes. There is a prize for the Constructors' uh, Championship, which doesn't seem to want to upload at the moment. So we'll just have a look at the Go and Gets Tough Award, sponsored by the man in the chat who was first to say hello to me. It was, of course, Dex, Dex, the VRT team. Finishing outside the top three um, and completing all of your media day duties. That will find yourself entered into a prize draw at the end of the season to win yourself £25 a PlayStation or Amazon vouchers. Uh, at the moment, here is what we have for the team standards as the GT3s just finished their outlaps. It is Eddie Thomas and Carmentalist. He is now third. We'll get back on screen and confirm that in a moment. But as you can see, uh, there is the team standings. It's the Volkswagen team. I love the name of the Audi and the Porsche driver. Uh, of course, car mentalist uh, leading the way in that one. What a team that is. Uh, anyone taking any bets on how far ahead they're going to finish uh, from the rest of the field? We've got Belgian Waffle in the second. ERT BMW is in third. The Wiz Khalifa is in fourth. Scramble. Or in fifth, the Carpathy Boys in sixth, Greentail Martini Race in seventh and eighth, RCG Racing. Or in ninth and the leftovers are in tenth at the moment. Kind of living up to their name a bit there, sorry, but you're going to make them easy for me. I'm going to use the jokes. Let me just see if I can make that a bit prettier. Ba -da -ba -ba -da. Uh, but yeah, when I was looking at the team lineups as we wait on first flying laps, from the GT3 hardly seems fair on the rest of the field, does it? Um, Chromadix, when you've got Carmentalist in the GT4 Porsche, APX Rogue in the GT3 Audi. I mean, we've got some strong competition within the individual fields, but as far as the overall team championship goes, it is very, very, very difficult to look beyond that particular team, surely. Or is there something in here I've missed again that you can... Uh, fill me in on bud because uh, to me that is just that's god tier <laughs> for uh, for console driving right there yeah the the fact that there are teams uh, uh puts also a vari uh, the variable of uh, of the teammates uh gt4 drivers are effectively able in a, some sort of way to damage uh, the gt3 in terms, not physically, of course, but in terms of time. Uh, Snatter was a good example because I think so, in a certain moment happened that two cars were battling and uh, one of the GT3 that, were, that was battling uh, passed the GT4, which was uh, the teammate of one of them. And uh, he actually, mm, I don't remember who, who, who did it, but I think he tried to give an advantage to his teammate for obvious reason, but to try to to mitigate the, the second driver. So GT3 are, are actually able, uh, uh, GT4s are actually able to uh, to put apart even in, in other leaderboards, and same way in the other way around. Uh, GT3s are effectively more able to overtake GT4s, but the rule applies uh, in the same way as in real life. GT4s are effectively uh, a bit, uh, uh, effectively have the right uh, to stay on the line. GT3 is uh, just to, to adapt to them. And ooh, -hoo, Milden just one tenth from the Porsche. On the BMW. Oh, Milden. 
On Floppy Fox, a new I was on board with him there. I knew he was on an absolute stonker of a lap, and he has done me proud in the Ferrari sub 23. That is quick. Definitely no 1.8 or 2 maximum negative scandals going on here. Uh, Floppy Fox in the GT3 Ferrari. Uh, absolutely throwing it around here at Laguna Seca. 122.9 to give himself a 2 tenth gap over Samba and Milden in third. Uh, but we'll have a quick look and confirmation. Sorry, I'm doing the usual squirreling about. It's why you all love me though. Uh, let's have a look and just confirm. It was ERTRE that did take pole position for the GT Force. Thomas Cesar in second. So it's a BMW 1-2. Then it's three Porsches. Carmentalist, Khalifa and Philip Bodal. Um, third, fourth and fifth. Badgerman in sixth in the Aston. Then it's Arno, uh, Bowers and Rageman. Uh, bringing up the rear for the GT4s. It is getting interesting at the top. The only three tens separating the top three in the GT3 class. As we see, last week's pole position driver, Milden crossing the line. Any improvement? No. No improvement at all. Only needs to fight. Only. <laughs> only three tens, John. Yep, easy done. Easy done. So it is. We've got Carrado uh, in seventh at the moment. Rogue. Uh, down in 6th although after the win last week uh, doesn't need too many fireworks here although he did say it was a course he really liked uh, for me this is always one you just want to survive get to the end, get as many points as you can in the bag and get yourself on to the next round Rogue has just been overtaken by Carrado actually in, in the Maka he's in the McLaren so Rogue now down to seven. Still three minutes to go. Plenty of time uh, for these drivers. Um, Chromedix, you yourself as a driver, is there anything on this track that is... I mean, this is probably going to be a really silly question because obviously it's totally different. But is there parts of the track that are a different... So say the corkscrew, for instance. In the GT4, easy cut corner to get round potentially, whereas in the GT3... You really have to be careful. Would that be the case? Or is there part, say, the last corner as well? The eggs out the last corner is absolutely vital. As we watch Floppy Fox coming towards that. So do you think there's any distinct advantages or disadvantages that the GT3s and GT4s have at certain parts of the track? Probably turn 4 and turn 5. Uh, those are two left-handers uh, that are banged into the inside. And it's quite a bit of downforce to, to keep the car into into the the rails of uh, of the line it is just one line there uh, the track is basically just one line so i sus i hope not but there should be a train uh, for the most of the of the race um but probably uh it's gonna be interesting to see the gt3 and gt4 in in that little section uh basically it's the uh, the right test uh, the the further right uh, on, of the track and uh, those are two turns that requires a lot of downforce and GT4 doesn't have a, 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 an aero package good enough uh, for those turns so it's possible that GT3 and GT4 that come in that, that, come in that, uh, in that point uh, they're gonna be in, in, uh, in great difficulties uh, I mean the faster cars uh, the problem comes when you are fighting because turn four, uh, no, turn five, sorry, uh, on the inside has also a gigantic bump. And that gigantic bump is if you touch it, you go into the sand, and from the sand, you go into the barrier, and from the barrier, you can go into the garage. So that will be the <laughs> <laughs> a very. Indeed. Do not pass the start finish line, do not collect your purple lap time, do not collect any podium points. Uh, straight to the mechanics mm. office. Yep. So drivers will probably take the, that section a bit slower, a bit a bit carefully. Uh, even in qualifying, I just saw the Fluffy Fox and the Samba took the, the, the inside too much and went straight into the sand. Luckily saving the car for another lap. But that's not 100% uh, sure you can do it. Most of the time the sand there is extremely uh, not grippy. Uh, compared to, <laughs> to anything else. To the tarmac, yeah, there is a big difference yes. actually I've found. 
Now I do find that again, I spend a lot of time in the sand making sand castles when I've got a steering wheel in my hand. It seems ergonomic. Um, but yeah, definitely going to, and you definitely, with the tyres being nice and hot, they will pick up a lot of grip. Oh, wrong second. Oh, I was watching him. I, I knew he was going to put a lap in him. We've jumped off and he has gone second. And look at the difference. Three thousandths separating uh, him and Ooh, Samba, who has just had the course of the commentator. Boom, and gone straight into the wall. Let me see if I can change that back to that. Uh, we should still be able to see. Rogue still out on track. Floppy Fox is in the pits. Samba Milden is in the pits as well in fourth. Still got Gallo and Camel Babo out on track. Carrado out on track as well. Uh, obviously, all the GT4s are in. Row coming through the corkscrew. Can he go even quicker? Well, he needs a sub 23 to even think about taking pole position. Still got Carrado out on track, so it's only the two of them left out on no, track at the moment. No, eh? Carado, uh Oh, yeah. something else. And there we go, Rogues come into the pits. So there we go. Number 16 drivers, Floppy Fox in the chat. Good evening. I'll say a quick hello to everybody in a second. And it is Floppy in the chat with a timely good evening. All sub 23 here at Laguna Seca finds himself on pole position. Joined on the front row of the, the grid by the man on screen just now. It is APX Rogue. Three thousands separate him and the ERT combo of Samba and Milden in the portion of the BMW. It's Michael Callo in fifth, Camel Babble six, Carrado in seventh. Then we get to the GT4s where Eddie Thomas and Carmental, as we've said, took the top spots. And um, before we say hi to everyone in the chat, let us just. Oh, Jess, how much do we love Streamlabs? I uh, really don't. Uh, here we go. Let's say to thank you to people that we do absolutely love. Of course, our sponsors here at One Hub Mental Health Foundation. It's good to talk. Make sure you get yourself any help. Reach out if you are struggling in any way. The Mental Health Foundation website is an excellent place to start. I also sponsor the league, our Vesper team, um, with their prizes. And we've also got uh, SimGrid as well. We're now on the SimGrid website for console. You can get signed up. Uh, on there, so massive thank you to them. NLR, Next Level Racing, of course, sponsor the leagues with a direct drive stand for the most driver of the days in the Formula One. We've got Free uh, M Sim Racing as well, who sponsor the leagues with their Sim Racing gloves. And of course, ERT, our very own. Used to drive a Ferrari, but he's now in a McLaren, so he doesn't get much love from me anymore. Uh, Dex, Dexter in the gang at uh, ERT. <laughs> oh, I can just imagine his wee face. Uh, let me just see if I can get control of the cameras once again. Uh, we're on board with APX Rogue, so we'll stick with that for the start. That will be excellent. Are you going to keep an eye on the GT4s for the start there, Chromadex? Have you got your PS4 yep. fired up, ready to go? Excellent. The man's a professional. Uh, any predictions for lap one, Chromadex, just before we uh, get on the formation lap? Uh, <laughs> probably the, the outside actually is a better place to start from. I know okay. that it seems a bit, a bit dumb, but the fact is that you have an airplane as turn one. In turn two, you, are, you have to go in the right. Uh, and the space between turn 1 and turn 2 is basically a couple of centimeters. And uh, in, in the hairpin, uh, you have to be very slow, and a lot of people will break, and a lot of people will do a sort of chain reaction where people slow down even more. Being on the outside means that you skip the entire part of slowing down, and you can still go on a racing uh, speed uh, without encountering any, any traffic. So. Maybe not not the first positions, so Rogue, Milden probably will not benefit from it as the, the, drivers in, the drivers behind. I probably expect maybe a couple of GT4s to, to use the, the outside to their advantage and to gain some position. So I will probably put some... Uh, I'll probably put... Uh, um, Eddie, Carmentalist... Uh, uh, maybe even Philip, uh, but even some of the GT3s, of course, uh, on the watch list. Yeah, definitely a worthy watch list there. 
Uh, Dex, there's no point in coming crawling back here. Okay, go on now, go! Walk out it. No, I'm looking. Uh, yeah, you're still in the fiat for the uh, Avenger, so we'll let you off, we'll let you off. Uh, there was someone else I was going to do. I've totally thrown this up off because of cracking that joke with Dex and I've lost half the chat as well because it's just popped out. Uh, but yeah, again, big thank you to all the sponsors and again, one hub uh, for getting me back involved. Um, congratulations to Jess on your award during the week. Um, we will hopefully, I will get in touch with you, but we'll hopefully get some time in the commentary box together. Um, perhaps here at the, before the end of the season. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Uh, we're in for an absolute crack of a race tonight. We're going to see uh, more laps completed here than any other circuit that we'll go to on the calendar. Uh, apart from perhaps Zandvoort, uh, but this is definitely uh, one of the shorter tracks. And just because it's short doesn't mean it's not technical. Oh, and for anyone in the chat that was triggered, uh, don't worry, we will uh, have uh, Chromadex educated by the end of the broadcast. So Chromadex, turn one at uh, Laguna Seca is actually just past the start finish straight and it's the kink left where the um, exit road for the pits meets the uh, start finish straight. Okay. Turn yes. two is the Andretti hairpin and turn three. So yeah, you do. You have to be careful. You know, it's, it's uh, true, it's true. I, yes. I see them, that, 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 that thing is a turn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and what a turn it is, you say that because it's one of the most difficult turns in motor racing. You really, really, really don't want to be going more than two wide uh, through there on lap number two because you just don't know. And uh, you can often find out the hard way just how hard some of those Why barriers are. <laughs> Uh, why not three wide? Well, here, if you're going three wide, I'm not on the outside. I'm telling you that. That's the one time being on the outside going into Andretti hairpin is definitely uh, not the advisable line. Uh, let me see if I can get you a little bit more game volume. I was worried about the onboard. Uh, let me know how the sound are. I did have a bit of a technical meltdown. Uh, who doesn't on broadcast day? Uh, so I'm using all brand new sound sources. Hey, hey hopefully uh, everything is coming through the picture. Seems to be working. I've got all those beautiful liberties and team and names down at the bottom. Here we go, it's a one hour race. We've got mandatory pit stop with GT3s, we've got GT4s, we've got floppy fox and go on the front row of the grid. We've got the ERT locking out row number two. There is the green light and we are into turn one. They very quickly get and it is looking like down the hill. It is the closest shot of the inside APX. We've mega defensive, get a real good pull on that outside line and it's not going to happen and I'll tell you what Samba looks like he's challenging for the lead straight up from third into second position his teammate uh, Milden has dropped the position so the ERT drivers have split in either direction Samba going up Milden dropping down the order Gallo is up into third position we'll see APX so got the post just ahead of him and that is that still that is Michael Gallo in the Bentley who has taken uh, fourth position from ERT Milden Milden in fifth is ERT Carol Barlow uh, just behind him. I think we'll take a quick update again. We'll see if Floppy Fox is in fifth. What's happened there? Is Floppy Fox in an accident? He has. What's happened to, what, what's happened to Fox? Fox is gone. Fox is hey. gone down the order. Yeah, but let's have a quick look at the GT4s then. It looks like that was a great start for Carmelo. He's already up in the second place there, Providence. Yeah, he actually did what I said. He went into, into the upside of turn two. Uh, to turn two and took the position on, uh, on Thomas. So, the only, his only opening now is the BMW in front of him, of Eddie. Yep, indeed, and he's got... Yeah, Thomas Khalifa there as well. Philip Bodal, sorry, got the uh, quick note from Dex here about the sound. We've got that one sorted out, but it's Carmentalist then in second. Eddie just ahead of him. Let's have a look back and see. Uh, up at the front, it is Samba leading the way then. After Floppy Fox touches the sand, finds himself well down the order. He's in fifth. Oh, and there's Samba running a bit wide as well, kicking up some dust through turns four and five. Uh, coming on to the Rahal straight, then the gap has closed back down to 7.10. Michael Gallo uh, still hanging in there. The BMW of Milden with Floppy Fox now in fifth. He'll definitely be looking to get places made back up there. And ERT Eddie 
is still leading the we'll way. Tried outside oh. on the send. Oh, he really did try that there. And I tell you what, Thomas is going to be a big beneficiary here if these two uh, keep battling the way they do. Coming up towards the corkscrew once again, then Chromadex. Uh, is Thomas looking for a double overtake here? Not now, because it's a corkscrew. It's a worst possible place to try an overtake, but they are now he heading into the final sector, which is the, fa the fastest one and also the easiest one to overtake someone. You can do it here, you can do it later, but probably Car Mentalist will try the switchback move into the last turn. Trying to teach into the inside, it doesn't have any space, it go for the outside on Eddie. Trying the outside on the last turn. Maybe the switchback. Doesn't work because Eddie actually sits on the apex and Thomas is the only one that benefits from it because he gained a lot of time. Yeah, he did. He really did get a lot of time and he's put himself right in the back seat of that Porsche car. Mentalist is now the filling in a BMW sandwich and the BMW is going to once again try and go round the outside. You have to be a wily campaigner to pull that move on car mentalist, I'll tell you. Uh, not to be this time unsurprisingly, but Thomas will keep building. He's got a few cars just behind him. That is ERT's Khalifa and Philip Bodal, uh, both in the Porsches. Oh, Thomas into the inside. Oh, yes. Oh, come on, cameraman. Please keep up. What are you doing to me? What are you doing to me? Side by side in turn four. Five, actually. Yeah, turn five onto the Rahal straight to come into turn six, which leads them up towards the corkscrew. He is definitely probing there. Thomas is looking to get himself back into second position. Uh, Car Mentalist may have felt a bit hard done by with the qualifying, um, but Thomas is definitely feeling hard done by with that start. And the two Porsches, you can see them in the background. They are getting closer and closer. Let's see in the corkscrew. Ooh, where they a bit wide. Oh, he has gone a bit wide there, and that's Kevin Car Mentalist, a great run on him at the moment then. Oh, uh, 22, he's, he's out of track. He crashed into the, the corkscrew. Uh, 22, oh, that's Rage Man, he's just been overtaken by Badger Man there. He's got himself up in position. Let's have a look at Milden and Floppy Fox then. Uh, we're jumping about all over the place as per usual, but there's battles. Uh, right in the podium positions for both classes, Eddie Carmentos and Thomas battling out for the GT4s and Milden trying to get himself back into podium contention along with Floppy Fox, our pole sitter, now finds himself in fifth position. Uh, that's the wrong screen for that. Let's do that. There we go. Uh, so, yes, yeah, Samba is still leading the way. Wouldn't exactly say it's massively comfortable. We are three laps in, 1.2 seconds is the gap. But it is a gap nonetheless. Another tenth he's found there in sector number two over APX Road, who's Rogue who started in second and is maintaining that second position. Michael Gallo up to third uh, with Milden and Floppy Fox. Uh, let's jump on board with Milden, shall we? Took pole position. Ooh, Carmentalist and Eddie side by side again into turn five. Okay, let's go for that. Uh, Carmentalist and Eddie. Oh, Oh, Thomas is getting involved as well. <laughs> oh, love it, the GT4s are yeah, having it all out scrap. Sorry, yeah, and you go, Coromadex. Thomas on the outside trying to, to put the move into Carmentris, and he actually he tries to make it, but Carmentris defended the, outside, the inside very well. In fact, Thomas has also lost some time because now Khalifa wants to overtake him. And I was going to say, if only someone had spotted the two Porsches in the background, apparently I did. Um, but it doesn't look like Thomas Carmetalis and Eddie dead because Khalifa and Bodal are both right in the mix. And I tell you, they are bringing Badger Man with them. You effectively have got a six way battle for third position at the moment. <laughs> Absolutely love to see this level of action. Four laps in. They're still all right on top of one another. Of course, we've got the mandatory pit stop to take Khalifa with a 1 minute 32 there. Badger Man with 1 minute 32 as well. So they're finding a the lap times. At the moment, Badgerman could well be one to watch after the pit stop phase. Uh, Eddie is still leading the way for the GT4 Zocar Mentalist in second. Thomas uh, sitting in third. There's Khalifa and Philip uh, all in a straight line at the moment. Let's see if there's been any changes up at the front. And what happened is, well, Michael Gallo actually, oh, and the Bentley he's found. Oh, uh, and, uh, and the BMW and the Ferrari collided in GT3. And oh, Milden is off. so is Floppy Fox, Milden, and Floppy Milden's in the pit lane. That is what happens there. And Floppy Fox is off and running, but that was a big hit there. Making contact on a straight, chaps. 
Not much defence there, I'm afraid. The stewards office is going to be busy after that one. Floppy Fox and ERT Milden are going to be even busier. Of course, Milden looks like he's going to be the busier of the two in that BMW. A long way to go to catch up. But catch up, he is going to have to. Michael Gallo. Uh, Milden again, Offington 1. He's getting very massive difficulty scraping his car on track. Alright, oh, okay. He's struggling. I'm uh, getting shouts in the chat to jump on board with Philip Badul and uh, Bodal, sorry. Uh, wrong race, there is the one Badul in another race, so Bodal in this one, I do apologise. He's just done a 32 compared to oh, Carmentalist and Caesar. 31's there, Lapman. Oh, look at the view he's got of that battle up at the Andretti hairpin. And it's. 97 is off! Oh, 97, no. uh, Samba is off track! He lost the position! Oh wow, Samba at the corkscrew, he's lost it on the way into the corkscrew and he's lost more than a position because that... Who was that that just went through? That was Camel Babu that's gone through, that is four or five positions. That Samba has lost himself there, no pressure whatsoever. Coming at the corkscrew with a 1.2 second lead and it's now all the pressure on APX Rogue's shoulders. He finds himself now leading the way with Michael Gallo climbing all over that rear spoiler and I do literally mean climbing all over you can see the Bentley badge underneath the Fanatec logo on that rear spoiler they're getting so close let me change that to the proper camera uh, in these corners all action no, all the time who is? Carmentalist is off oh he is he is he is he's buying badger man He lost it uh, out, uh, going out of Corkscrew because he was trying to go into some out the inside uh, of Eddie who went uh, a bit uh, a bit wide uh, into the Corkscrew. So he found himself into the very, very inside of the Corkscrew and he lost uh, completely the grip of the car. He still saved the car, but he has lost several positions. Yeah, sorry, he's just ahead of Badgerman actually, sorry. Badgerman's got the same, uh, very similar living to another driver there, but yeah, that Badgerman. I uh, did say he could be one to watch the last stage, he's now got car Oh, mentalist. Samba struck again! No, oh. no, uh, uh, yes, Samba. Samba, Samba off track. Mm, maybe Kababa and Samba collided because... They both lost some time, but none, none of us went... Went completely off track. So I just, I just mean that they slightly collided. Right, okay, so a slight collision there, let's have a look. Oh, come on, car, come on, cameraman. Uh, cameraman for Carmentalist, please. He's now the one attacking Philip Bodal, so he was looking good to take himself some positions. They've now got uh, one of the quickest men in the championship just behind them. Having a look out under a half straight, won't try and move in the left hand. There is there going to be a change of the lead? Taya Rogue has got his work cut out for him at the moment. Michael Gallo in that Bentley is absolutely flying, and this floppy fox in the background, he's now back up to third. After everything that's been going on. Uh, Colin Mason, you joined at just the right time, but unbelievable action left and right. It is incredible uh, what we've got, what we've been treated here. Coming along at the end of the Rahal Strait, it's still Rogue leading the way. Gallo uh, looking to pick his pocket as and when he can. He's keeping that very close. Let's see how the GT4s are getting on. Uh, Carmental is still over the back of Bodal, who has been promoted to fourth. Khalifa is now in third with Thomas Cesar in second and ERT Eddie leading the way in the GT force. Oh, Thomas has had a big run deep there into the Andretti hairpin and I tell you, that is going to give Khalifa the run. He needs to make it a very, very uncomfortable turn at number three for Thomas. He's managed to gather himself ever so slightly and he's going to need to, that's Bodal and Carmenel is closing down, so Bodal Definitely the place to be. Oh, and I tell you what, never mind that. The battle for the podium has just gone three way up at the top. It's Gallo, Fox, and Rogue that are now battling up right at the top there. Fox has closed right back up. So he has shown some absolutely phenomenal pace. You can see him uh, very clearly in the rear view mirror there. Let's get a camera we can work with. There we go. Uh, so there is the Ferrari. Uh, this one's non stop. We're 12 minutes in uh, Chromadex. I've barely had a chance. Uh, to catch my breath and it doesn't look like the drivers are going to give us any rest by any time soon three way battle for the podium at the top of GT3s and the GT4s oh F Philip is off uh, on the corkscrew oh, oh and I tell you what the leaders of the GT3 are just coming up to the corkscrew as well this is going to be fun 
So Philip Baudin lost it in the corner. So he's lost the position there to Karn Mental. It's Bazier man now right behind him. We've got someone coming into the pits. Did I see someone coming into the pits there? I'm sure I did. Bowers and ERT Arno getting involved as well. Arno, of course, on the podium last week. Uh, finds himself down near the back. Tries to double move up inside. Did he avoid contact? No, he didn't. Causes a bit of a... Uh, Thomas is in the pits then for the GT4. Yeah, but he can't. He's, he's outside the pit window. Oh, of course, he's outside the pit window, so he must be coming in for damage then. That's right, there's been a pit window introduced as well. I've been getting that caught up in everything that's going on. I forgot about that uh, little rule change. Of course, there is a pit window during the race, so yeah, he's outside it. So that is a real hammer blow to Thomas then. Uh, battling so far up the field. Uh, speaking of battling, this is the GT4 leaders being caught by the GT3 leaders. Uh, Floppy Fox trying to get past it. Michael Gallo still APX Rogue still in command. Uh, Thomas hopefully going to make it back out on track. Uh, Car Mentalist then re promoted back to the podium uh, with Thomas coming into the pits. Khalifa is now closing in on Eddie. Eddie really has had his hand full, hands full for these opening 14 minutes so far. It's now Khalifa in the Porsche that's trying to apply some pressure. Floppy Fox is still applying pressure as well. And is that Sam just behind him? Well, he's a fair bit down the road. That is the McLaren of Corrado that they've just come past there. Ooh, the Ferrari looking very, very quick. Down the hill through the left, coming through the penultimate corner. Uh, that is, of course, uh, is that Rage Man just put ahead of him? No, it's CPX Rogue. In the Audi, sorry. Getting confused with the Audis there, but it is Rogue still leading the way, and it is Floppy Fox who is applying that pressure. And uh, it's an ERT 1 2 in the GT4s there, uh, Chromadix. Do you think we'll see Eddie and Khalifa battle this one out, or do you think they'll just uh, help defend one another, at least into the pit stop phase? They do have Car Mentalist uh, closing that gap at a fairly decent rate at the moment. Uh, I really think these type of events where teams are structured into the uh, into the league I don't say that erase the real teams but probably it's just uh, lighten some barrier because effectively yeah they are teammates they are both in RT but not in the leagues not in the here in this league they are not teammates so they will probably I don't say that they will launch the car and hope for the best, but probably they won't even say, oh no, go you, go you. They will still try to to take the ball of the the, ball, the, the victory in class. So probably no team orders, no, um, no barriers. Oh, big off for the Bentley in GT3. Whoa. Michael Gall is off track. And the Porsche of Samba is trying to get into the inside. In fact, he gets a position on him. And Floppy Fox is in second and Samba is in third. Wow, indeed. There, the penultimate corner. Oh, we've got a GT4. Uh, that is... Oh, I'll tell you what. That is Carmentalist. That's Carmentalist. Where is he I trying to get his way past Carleaf on the hairpin? Oh, and there's Samba getting back involved. So there's going to be blue flags flashing. He's got Michael Gallo, who's just recovered. Oh, beautiful driving there by all four cars. Making it through nice and safe. But I'm seeing an absolute gaggle of cars coming through. Floppy Fox then. He is definitely on a charge. Michael Gallo has dropped off the pace after that incident. The cameraman really struggling to keep up here at Laguna Seca. But there is Floppy Fox. He's closed straight on to the back of APX Rogue then. He is wasting no time making his way back through the field. Arnold's trying to get a move. He was on the podium, of course, in race number one at Snetterton. Uh, finds himself down the order ever so slightly at the moment, but looking to improve that position with a move on Bowers. He's been tracking him for a couple of laps now. Uh, but we'll jump back on to the lead, or the battle for the lead of the GT3s. Uh, it's Ferrari versus Audi, Floppy Fox versus APX Rogue. Uh, this finishing position, uh, both of Ooh, the... Carmentalis on the inside the take the took the position on Khalifa. Oh wow, yes he has. I was just about to say how the team positions are still looking pretty good for the Volkswagen drivers. And uh, yeah, that's just improved again. We can mentally find an, another overtake there in his bag of tricks uh, to make it still. So it's still a three-way battle with the 
Porsches. That is Camel Babel coming up the inside of turn one into the hairpin. Uh, Khalifa and Carmentalist have settled this one at the moment. It looks like Arnold Bowers uh, still going out there. Is a Bentley just going past the GT3s? Uh, Floppy Fox is still chasing APX Rogue. Uh, 42 minutes still cool. <laughs> Love Laguna Seca. Another one of these tracks that never fails to deliver high speed action. That I thought that was Khalifa was watching there, but no, obviously the cameraman's still struggling to keep up. Uh, there I was goes. watching actually the Floppy Fox. Uh, after all that happened, he's just half a second behind the, the leader. Wow. Yeah, he is really quick. He is really, 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 really quick around here. Uh, just watching the GT4s here. Uh, but yeah, he is absolutely nailing these laps. I tell you, it looks like he's a lot closer than half a second, in fact. Uh, let's just have a look on board. Gratuitous Ferrari camera work. Do love any excuse to jump on board with a Ferrari. And there we go. We can see just how close he is. He took pole position. Uh, find himself in the sand trap early doors. Realised it wasn't a game of golf. Got back on track. And he's carved his way through the fields. We've seen a few drivers make mistakes. Which have certainly helped that charge. But he is the man keeping it between the mayo and the mustard. And putting in these lap times at the moment. Uh, 24. Uh, Samba was more than 6 seconds down after his spin. Uh, yeah, another great recovery actually. He's within a set. In fact... We're waxing lyrical about Floppy Fox there, uh, Chromadex, but ERT Samba, he had that big drop as well, and he now finds himself within a second of Floppy Fox, so really this battle between Rogue and Floppy, uh, this could bring Samba and the Porsche right back into it. I'm starting to think uh, that it's, it's a bit odd because effectively both Floppy Fox and Samba manage to, to regain a lot of time and also Michael Gall is about to, to gain the, the time back so apparently it's just that the Audi is uh, it's just a bit slower but uh, I don't understand why I suspect because that's, that's actually a possibility that he's trying to, to, save some, to save some fuel because they can't fit as uh, when they want they have a pit window of uh, of 10 minutes in the middle of the race. If he put uh, not enough fuel for his car, he can just pit and do, okay, I I put the remaining fuel for the race and that's it, uh, uh, good together. He has to wait. Just now, what a timing. For, uh, for entering the pits, uh, if he has, uh, he, he didn't put enough fuel on his car. Otherwise it, uh, it could also be a puncture because this track, uh, the curves are a little, little higher in some places and you can get a puncture if he has a puncture in, so in in the right side of the of the car it's a big problem because the entire track is anti-clockwise and with uh, basically oh, any turn is basically on left hander except two three three of them are not uh, are not left hander so it could be anything actually uh, i don't think it's his pace because he he showed it in qualifying that he is capable of a good time Oh, we'll see. Yeah, we certainly will, as you stated. Yep, perfect timing with the pit window opening. ERT Arno has come in, the first driver, uh, to take his mandatory pit stop during... Oh, Mildenhoff's track again. Oh, it's Mildenhoff again. What position? I'm just... I'm some, we, we can't watch anything other than this three-way battle for the leader of the race. Oh, the sausage is there, lighting up the back of that uh, Porsche. Sending him round the other way, across the start-finish line, only half a second down. On his personal quickest laps, are still lapping very quickly. In fact, Samba posting the quickest lap time out of the top three. Oh, an APX Rogue as he run a bit deep there. The Ferrari's definitely going to have a good exit there. Coming into turn at number three, Daba breaks, throw it in, get some curve, and away you go. Straight on to the red and whites once again. These three absolute precision driving. Nerves of steel for APX Rogue at the moment. And it's still leading the way. Samba and Fox still very much uh, breathing down his neck now. Uh, if you were these three drivers, which are, sorry, two questions for you, Chromex. Which of these three drivers would you rather be in this position at this moment in time? And which of these three drivers do you think needs to come into the pits first? Uh, first, uh, I, w I, 
I am a type that prefer to be attacked than to attack. I I honestly think that I can defend better and uh, flop you. <laughs> if you're watching this, you know. Uh, Indeed. Uh, I am, in fact, uh, flop you. Oh. There we go. <laughs> Listen to. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, I, I prefer to defend than to attack because I'm better in defending than to attack. And I was about to say that the first one to pit uh, is effectively floppy because uh, he was in, in a sandwich with Samba behind. Any mistake would have, uh, would have put Samba on advantage on him. He has Rogue in front, which is fairly slower than him. So, he made the perfect choice to pit as soon as possible and uh, try to gain the world time uh, in clean air. Yes indeed, so he's going to come out with some clean air, or is he going to come out with some clean air? We'll see. He's going to be in there for a bit of a time. Um, let's have a look here though. Um, absolutely never ever ever can be counted out. I don't think anyone in the chat... Uh, oh, Carmentalist and Eddie! Yes, I was just about to say, I don't think we're talking about comeback drives here. Carmentalist once again, he's just lapped a second quicker than Eddie, so Eddie really has had the toughest of races. He's got to be looking good for the driver of the day. He has done nothing but defend his position from the start and defend it. He has 25 minutes in so far. The pit window is calling. So again, so I'm thinking your advice here, uh, Chromadex, would be Carmentalist to pop into the pit first and get himself yes. some clean air or, yeah, I would say so. Although he is. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah, that's going to give him good Oh, fun. Rogue and Samba both in the pizza. Oh, Rogue and Samba in the pits. So they Samba. have answered. Wow. Yeah, but Samba, I I would have not pit because uh, Rogue has to, to cover from the Ferrari. Samba has to gain from the Audi in front of him. And again, I think that was more gaining than loss on... Uh, uh, for to to put on the table because probably probably he was already in front of him so at this point he just try to to overcut because it's also a possibility here in, in Laguna and try to put uh, to put rock behind you uh, I I would have done it but also it's it's very perfectly reasonable to the Porsche is in front of the Audi he, he overtook him in the pizza <laughs> yes he has Oh yes he has, he's overtaking him in the pit state and coming past the pit entrance, it's Floppy Fox, he's going to come around the last corner. These two drivers have been released. Most race conditions, they both need to come through the uh, crazy crazy pit exit road we've got. And I tell you what, the pores look good, Floppy Fox has really lost some time there. The I think he made a mistake somewhere. Yeah he must have, that was... Uh, Let's jump on board and see what his previous lap time was. One minute thirty. Ah no, he sense. repaired the damage. Ah, he got damage repaired. Okay, wow. If he was, if he was that quick with damage, then yeah, probably was a good idea to get himself repaired and get out and running. But it is Samba who is leading the race after an overtake L and pit entrance, pit exit, uh, released by his mechanic quicker than Rogue. He was defended stoutly the whole race. Speaking of defending stoutly the whole race, let's have a look at ERT Eddie. Oh look, he's defending stoutly once again. That is Carmental is still all over the back of him. We'll jump on board with our returning champion and current GT4 leader. One round in. Now he won race number one in this class. Will he go for the full Chromadex and take his pit stop? GT3 going round the outside. That is the race leader of Samba. Uh, coming through uh, the race leaders for the GT4s. You can see the pace differential. So I assume, yep, there he is. Uh, that would be APX Rogue making his way through as well. Excellently done. No problems whatsoever. Bit of a pain though for Carmetis. Again, that would have just encouraged me uh, to come into the pits. But here would be a question Carmetis' strategy when he is already the two time uh, one hub champion. <laughs> That's why we're in the commentary box, or why I'm in the commentary box. Uh, we've got you in here, Chromadex, because you actually know what you're doing on track, which makes your commentary insightful. Uh, whereas mine's just overexcitable babble. Uh, but it is the BMW and the Porsche uh, for the GT4s still going at it. 12 minutes left, of course, uh, for the pit window to take that mandatory stop. The brakes proper going. 
uh, on that card. Let's have a look. Oh, Carmel Barbell's come into the pitch as well. Michael Gallo, who we saw challenging for podium positions early doors, inherits the lead of the race. Carmel Barbell comes to a stop as Samba comes through the court screw with APX Rogue. And uh, now dropping off 1.8 is the gap there. 6.6 is the gap that Floppy Fox has got to overturn. Certainly it wouldn't put it past them with a display that he's put on so far. Uh, the GT3 lead got plenty of camera time pre-pit stops. There's Floppy Fox there, it's just coming past actually. And it's the GT4 battle for the lead that we're watching at the moment. Uh, there is a very hungry Fox in a fast Ferrari. Uh, he'll nip up the inside of turn one. Into turn two. It'll be as you were. Car mentalist. Ooh, excellent on the brakes here. Gets a nice tight entrance into the hairpin. Superb exit on the way out. And he has once again put himself right in the back seat. I tell you, the BMW driver is going to have to make room. He's going to have to shift his golf clubs and his uh, state agent's uh, laptop uh, out of the way there because Car Bentless in the Porsche is pretty much intent on climbing into the back seat there, per perhaps sharing some popcorn. He's all over the back. And again, even though these cars don't have much of an aerodynamics package, we can see they don't have one uh, quite safely. Uh, still being in the dirty air behind them, that's not going to do great things for your tyres, or is that not much, and uh, not as much of a factor in the GT4s as the GT3s? No, uh, GT4 pro, uh, from from what I uh, from what I tested, uh, they don't suffer the. Oh, Michael Gallo is off track. No way. Uh, Michael Gallo is off track de. In before turn four. Be oh wow. Turn five. And the cameraman doing us a disservice. Yes, he is. Oof. That is a forlorn looking Bentley there. Yeah, he lost 14 seconds just in that spot. Wow. Milden, in fact, yeah, we're going to see he's lost actually a lot more than that. There was a 17 second gap between Gallo and Milden. And when I come across this timing line, there won't be. One second, so that's effectively 16 seconds he's just lost on his competitor. I mean, that competitor is milled in, who's definitely got the bit between his teeth and a point to prove here in the latter stages of this race. That is going to be an uncomfortable uh, second stint. I'm um, just jumping back on board with Car Mentalist and Eddie. Um, it's very difficult speaking. For, yeah, oh, Tom, thank you. Listen again. I haven't said a proper hi to everyone in the chat, but Tom, yeah, thank you uh, for the camera board. Yeah, it's fun uh, on the PlayStation, as Jess and I like to say on broadcasts. It's not what Jess and I say uh, after podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's definitely fun. It keeps you on your toes. That's a new dimension, I feel. Play one that they will get fixed soon. Uh, no fixing needed with Car Metalist and Eddie, though. These two are still absolutely flying. Badger man is in third in the GT4s at the moment. We've got nine minutes left of the pit window. Uh, Michael Gallo has come into the pits after that off track. Samba will therefore sail through. Milden has been promoted to the lead of the race. Uh, just come past someone exiting the pits. There's Gallo on his way out the pits as well. So he also, Rog lost the car uh, on on the pit sand on the sand pit uh, after turn uh, uh, turn, se turn six, and uh, now Floppy Fox is just three seconds behind him. Wow, he really is closing that gap. I definitely need to get some uh, driving tips from Floppy Fox in that Ferrari. He has that prancing horse well and truly tamed. As you're saying, a three second drop in the deficit. Um, and Rogue as well. The deficit between himself and Samba is definitely increasing. Uh, let me just. Ah, okay, yep. Yep, no problems, yes. Um, but yeah, Rogue, um, he did see he was surprised by getting himself second position. Uh, in qualifying, he finds himself second in the race at the moment, but Floppy Fox, there he is. He is in the background. Uh, he's just trying to get past Khalifa and Bodal, who are still absolutely inseparable. Uh, these two in the opening stages, right on top of one another. 
And as we come back out of the pit stop phase, uh, the two of them are still right there or thereabouts. Badgerman into the pit. Bowers. I'm actually a bit surprised by Philip. Uh, he was one of the of the drivers that lost the car on the cockshoe. And he lost several several uh, se seconds and positions. So now he's just behind Khalifa, who was battling for second position just 20 minutes ago. So another stone, uh, Philip. Uh, it's a bit of a surprise this championship because from what I, from what I understood, uh, he, his pace uh, shows up uh, after the start of the race. So it's <laughs> right. It's okay. Like yeah. There is ten minutes of uh, of buffer where he starts his car and then oh wait I have to race and he starts gaining time and positions. Yeah. Which is <laughs> my Just... tactic, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> I wish that was my tactic. I tell myself that's my tactic and I just, yeah, I'm still waiting on the second half of the race to kick in and find myself some quicker pace. Um, yeah, but no, he's certainly coming alive as far as race pace goes. As you just pointed out, there's Car Mentalist come into the pits. But he's already on his way out of the pits. Oh, the T2 is off track. Rage that's man. not the first time you've said that, actually. That is Rage Man, yeah, in the GT4s. Uh, bit of a mistake there in the corkscrew. Oh, and there he is. Uh, Eggs and there we go. Just making his way out of the way. Uh, hello, you still there? No, no, no. No, I there we go. Watching sorry. from from the side the ah. of track, and it was a bit odd seeing him uh, reversing. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, you were talking about Philip Bodal on the recovery drive, coming into Andretti hairpin. He really does want this position from Khalifa. Uh, potential podium honours on the display. There we go, yep, he's come straight in. Uh, as you say, that is instantly to cover him off. There's an Audi joining him, that is Rage Man. Uh, he'll hopefully get some damage fixed. Philip Bodal still trying to come on cameraman. Why are you so bad in turn five? Uh, you're making me look good. <laughs> uh, Bodal and Khalifa then. Still. Uh, separated by not much more than a bungee cord at the minute the two Porsches that's one of these things you get yourself in a multi-class race and then you find yourself on track with a car identical to yours uh, meaning it's very 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 tricky to overtake two cars that aren't alike well they are kind of similar actually they're both middle engine rear wheel drive it is floppy fox and apx rogue floppy fox is flying in fact, he might be the fox that they talk about in the nursery rhyme tongue twister. Was it the floppy fox ran around the ragged rock? And he is running circles, rings, whatever you want to call it, around the rest of the competition. Carmen needs to gain six seconds by the pit stop. No, five seconds, sorry. Unbelievable, Jeff. He really has. Is he ahead, Eddie? He is. Yes, Eddie's just exited the pit and there is Carmentalist going through turn three. There was almost a note of uh, surprise in my voice there. Please delete that from the record. I'm not surprised in any way, shape or form. It's Carmentalist doing Carmentalist things and in the pour she's taking the lead of the race. And I tell you, you look at that gap, you might, well, is it as, I think it might be as much as four seconds ahead of Eddie at the moment. We'll get full confirmation of that any second. As he comes through the Rahal straight, she'd cross the timing board. We'll get confirmation on that in a minute. Uh, Bodal's dropped slightly back off Khalifa then, with some GT3 cars making their way through. Floppy Fox definitely not dropping off the back of APX Rogue. Can he get his way past and start making advances towards Samba? What a recovery would that be, although what a recovery it's been for Samba, now finding himself in the lead of the race. You want to talk about pulling off a pit stop genius. There is Milden as well, trying to get his way past his ERT teammate Camo Babo. He is on another recovery drive. That's something you will hear a lot when Laguna Seca is racing for more, when you're racing at Laguna Seca for more than 15 minutes. Recovery drive, recovery drive, recovery drive, uh, because the corkscrew uh, can just be so deadly. Uh, we've got equilibrious gaps between Camel Babble and Milden as we do between Floppy Fox and Rogue, so we'll stick on board with the Foxster. Oh, Milden on his side, and Corrado is, uh, and Camel Babble lost the position on Milden. 
Oh wow, just as I say that, we get the overtaking of this. <laughs> <laughs> what a timing. Absolutely, could not have timed that any better. Like the pit window opening, uh, Milden pops one up the inside of his ERT. Teammate finds himself in fifth, uh, trying to catch up to the back of Michael Gallo. Mm, could be a tall order, we know how quick Michael is, but we did see a mistake uh, from him earlier. He'll be hoping to keep that in check. Philip Bodal still trying to get past ERT Khalifa. Uh, Thomas Cesar still to take his pit stop. I don't think he's realised. Oh, he's got two minutes left to go, so he's still got plenty of time uh, to come in and get that pit stop taken. There is Carmel Babo. And uh, now losing time to Milden. So we'll jump back on board uh, with Floppy Fox then. This is a battle for second position. Uh, speaking of Carpenter, jumping back again, side to side. Uh, we can, in fact, have a look at that. There we go. All right, so I'll show the GT3s. Huh. Oh, well, there we go. Uh, yeah, so let's just have a nosy here. Let's get some helmet cam. We do love the onboards with a Ferrari, don't we? All right, I do, certainly. Uh, but this is for podium honours, as I say, and this is going to make uh, big differences in the championship. Uh, both drivers will be hoping to overhaul uh, Milden and the gang from last week's podium. And it doesn't look like, uh, let me just, uh, yeah, so it will be, sorry, it will be Rogue and Floppy Fox then find themselves returning uh, to the podium. Samba, if he can hold this one together, is going to get himself a great finish. He took fifth last week, uh, so this is quite the improvement in points that is going to make that championship an absolute cracker. Uh, Milden, of course, third at last week, finds himself in fifth, and he is trying to chase down Michael Gallo, who got fourth. Uh, so he did finish behind Gallo last week. Uh, there's Thomas, he does, has come into the pits there with a minute left to go. Nice timing indeed. Rogue. Floppy Fox again, three tens quicker. Oh, look at much. Oh, how much later on the break. This is a tough one for me here, Crovidex. Is this a case of if rather than when Floppy gets the overtake done, or can Rogue make that Audi wide enough and completely neutralise uh, the advantage that Floppy's got on the brakes? Uh, Laguna uh, is a bit hated from drivers for, the, for, for this matter. Uh, basically, the main problem is that there are very few overtaking spots. Uh, if you're brave enough, there are more, obviously. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what you need is to be very brave and have two compliant drivers uh, mm. to get some overtakes done here. So, uh, yeah, why is the blue flags flashing when the second and third are battling? That must be some other part of the track. Sorry, that threw me off there. Yeah, but the main problem is that uh, you want to overtake. Uh, basically, uh, the best spot to overtake will be inside of Corkscrew or uh, turn, uh, turn 2. Uh, the problem is when the driver effectively uh, becomes wider than the track. Uh, because for the Corkscrew, you just put yourself in the middle of the track and you can't overtake because uh, you are scared that you could hit the, same, the, the, dri uh, the driver on your right, uh, whatever, and go into a mistake. For turn one, uh, 2, uh, it's just a matter of that the hairpin it's not banked so on the outside you really lose a lot of speed uh, compared to the inside uh, while some some hairpins in, in other tracks have a little bank into the inside so you can go into the outside here is also the opposite because the inside is a bit uh, is a bit higher than the outside so you actually lose a lot of time on the outside uh, also the problem is that uh, there aren't a lot of straights there is just one, uh, which isn't even a little straight. And... Uh, oh, the Ferrari on the back of the Audi! Really into the cross crew? I think there has been a little touch between them. Nothing too, too extraordinary, but... He is there! Ooh, yeah, seen. he really is. I think there might have been a minor touch. Phillips getting some cheering in the chat. Oh, and I tell you what, that's a hairpin. Oh, almost played out very well for Philip there indeed. He is getting cheered on. This is a podium battle that we're watching. Sorry, my apologies. I thought this was for fourth and fifth. This is actually for third and fourth. 
Uh, the two Porsches battling out. Eddie, the lone BMW, in the top five. Uh, with Bowers in the Audi. There is Corrado, the GT3 car, just making his way through. Popping himself in the middle. Uh, Philip Bodal not put off by that one. No, let's have a look and see how Fox is getting on. Uh, I think we'll just stay in this car and jump. Ooh, the Audi. That is what... It was more... Uh, <laughs> was a bit of a drift. That was a moment, uh, I think we can definitely safely call that. And that is looking bump draft. Ooh, the GT4, uh, GT4 saved the, the Audi. The GT4 covered cover. was on the outside, so uh, Floppy Fox effectively couldn't overtake on the outside. So it is, this is what I, I mentioned when GT4 could decide the battles. This was just an unfortunate moment for, uh, for the Ferrari, but he couldn't do any move because there was a GT4 in, in a in the possible overtaking line. So, oh, oh, he's been there! Oh, he's been there! He's been there on the way down the court screw, straight into the wall on the exit, and that is battle over for the moment, at least. Floppy Fox showing all the pace after making that recovery early doors, and with 16 minutes left to go, that is quite the headache he's left himself with. And a fair bit of damage on the front aerodynamics of that Ferrari, no doubt. The battle with Rogue, hats off to Rogue. Absolute amazing defensive display. Floppy Fox not able to hold it together in the slip seam of the dirt air just behind him. And APX Rogue, he was surprised that he qualified in second. And I tell you, it looks like he's going to finish the race in second. Absolutely phenomenal drive from him and Samba. He's slipping inside into seven. Yes, he is coming along the house straight. at set up the hell. Two six. Unbelievable, Jeff. Turn six. Yeah, I was going to correct you, but in the excitement, the heat of the moment, I didn't want to be at the end of the house straight. Is turn six coming at the course? It is Philip Bodal. What a move! Love to see a side by side success. We pulled off the two GT fours. No problem whatsoever. And Bodal. Was getting himself some cheers in the chat. I'm sure Tom Preset has now got his t-shirt over his head, waving his hands about, uh, giving it the full uh, Team America super secret signal for uh, for Philip there. Uh, Bodal on to the podium. So it's still a poor sandwich for Eddie there in the lone BMW in the top five of the GT4s. A lot of numbers to remember there. Uh, but it is now Bodal. That is on the outside, and Khalifa is going to try his best to catch back up, I imagine, but it does look Boudal has got that Porsche absolutely dialed in. At the moment then, it's Rageman who is bringing up the rear for the GT Force. Thomas Cesar, podium pretender, early doors, dropped right down the order. There's ERT Arno, who of course found himself on the podium last week. Uh, down in 7th position with Badgerman just ahead of him in 6th it's Bowers Whoops. that's a code brown where's the cameraman he's made it through he has made it through Bowers there Khalifa as we've seen just being demoted to 4th at the expense of Philip Bodal taking 3rd place it's ERT Eddie in 2nd and it's some driver called Carmentalist leading the way. Do we know who he is? Of course we do. Carrado's in 7th for the GT3s. We've got Camel Babble in 6th. Milden in 5th. Gallo in 4th. Floppy Fox in 3rd. We see the sight of his accident a mere 2 laps ago. He's got 5 seconds and 14 minutes to make that back up. Is it possible? Uh, APX Rogue will certainly be hoping that after the display he's put in in that Audi has not put a foot wrong and finds himself in second. Samba did put a foot wrong, still finds himself leading the race. Absolutely incredible scenes for the poor driver. And Chromadex, all this amazing driver driving, someone's just uh, sang kind of just got the fear. Uh, we've got to pick a driver of the day, each from this lot. Uh, where do we? Where would you even start with that one? <laughs> um, it's gonna be just a checklist of uh, what, uh, basically, evaluation of every single aspect from qualifying, race, overtake, pace. I have to evaluate every single bit of it because there are some 
incredible drivers, reco some incredible recoveries, some incredible saves, some incredible incredibles. <laughs> whatever that means. And <laughs> so it's gonna be a bit hard to decide who is the best uh, in the 16 driver uh, grid. Yeah, that really is definitely uh, not made easy, but. Oh, Milton effect. is flashing his light to, to to Michael just to let him know that he is there. He he wants another victim to to his checklist. Uh, no, that was position. Samba. That was Samba, the race leader, going through. No, no, uh, Milton. I'm saying about Milton. Oh, is he right? Oh, yes, on the back. Sorry, right. So the race leader just went past Milton as well. I didn't realize Gallo was quite so close to him there. I do apologize, but you're right. Yeah, Milton. Uh, yep, yeah, he is getting within striking distance. That is for sure. We're going to see some last lap overtakes. Ooh, what time is it now in the game? And nice right multiplier on six. Excellent. Uh, yeah, so in the game at the moment, it's 22 minutes past nine. Uh, of course, the reason it is getting so dark is because there are no extra lighting facilities at Laguna Seca. And does anyone know why that is? Because the track's in the middle of the desert, it would quite frankly be far too cold to, to race at night on the cold tarmac. So they never installed lights. So there we go. You learn something new every day. Uh, but yeah, so there is no, there's never, ever, 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 ever in the history of Laguna Seca been a race uh, at night. Uh, and I have that on the highest of authorities, um, Mr. Uh, Doc Neil Bender. Uh, love you. Thank you very much uh, for. Um, viewing me with your never-ending knowledge, but yeah, no lights at Lagoon at night, so it really does make it uh, a proper challenge for the drivers. Uh, as you can see in the surroundings, uh, no lights whatsoever, uh, so the, the drivers do solely have to rely on their headlights, and as you can see, around the course, as twisty and windy as this, it can be really difficult uh, to catch those Breaking points and acceleration markers as we see Milden just catching himself a bit of left hand tyre dust coming out the penultimate corner. In the last corner, he has steadied the ship and is on his way. Oh, and that's something in the background just absolutely binned it. I think it was Bowers in the 24. Oh, Bowers in the Audi. Yeah, it looked like it might have been actually, yeah. Uh, let's have a look. Fox has closed that gap again. <laughs> Four it seconds. was, yeah, it was now, so it's a second and a half or so that he's made up in four minutes. If he keeps up that pace, it means he's going to be back on Rogue's oh, bumper. Oh, Gallo lost the position now. Oh, Gallo has lost the position. Yep, in turn from between three and four, he went a bit wider on, on, on the exit of turn three, and he lost the position on Milner, so now Milner is in fourth position. Wow. So yeah, there we go then. That is going to certainly bring a smile on Milden's face as far as the championship is concerned. I am sure he needs to bring home as many points as he can. Of course, finished second overall uh, in season one. Although technically it's one of those ones, if you went to the bookies, you probably could have got betting without Carmentalist because he was uh, yeah, very, very, very quick uh, that first season. And again, season number two. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen, season number three, he's not lost any pace at all and has absolutely mullered, that is the professional term, thank you very much, uh, the rest of the field. 10.7 seconds is now the gap he has over Eddie, who is definitely still well within a shout for driver of the day, given how much defending he did for his first stint. I mean, I know you enjoy... Uh, defending Chromadex, but there's got to be a limit to it. And Eddie, for that first stint, all he did was defend against a different car. He really did have to soak up a lot of different driving styles uh, to hang on to that position. So definitely a well-earned podium if you can bring it home um, over the next eight minutes. Uh, yeah, defending is a bit more uh, uh, exhausting than attacking. Uh, because for the fan, you have to look at the track, look on the mirror, and look for possible attacks. Because you also have to think if he attacks, if he doesn't attack, you have to have to move to a different line. And there are two philosophies about defending. Just don't care and do your lines, and uh, when it happens, it happens. Or, like me, constantly looking at both the track and the mirror and getting yourself an edge. 
<laughs> yep. I, uh, yeah, the whole defending thing, I do tend to get myself in a bit of a cluster. Um, it's definitely been known to happen, that is for sure. Um, but Eddie, yeah, he soaked up all that pressure. And only the just genius carmentalist pit stop race IQ off the charts has denied him. Uh, what would it I wonder been? if Eddie actually lost, uh, lost some time because of repairs, because he actually lost four and, and a half seconds from, from carmentalist. So, in a lap, it's difficult that you will lose so much time just for just by clean air. Yeah. So probably there has been a mistake in the pit lane because that's the only reason. And that's where some drivers are better than others, not because of pure race pace or just because of position, but just because of these tiny little details like pitting in the right moment, uh, not losing time in pit in pit lane, uh, even stopping on the right box. Uh, you. You can lose up to three seconds just if you go slightly, slightly longer. So uh, there are some tiny details. It's not just race pace. But talking about race pace, I think Floppy needs some some ballast because he gained three <laughs> seconds in three laps. Incredible. Shout out to Badger Man as well. He's just got the overtake done on Arno, who of course finished on the podium for the GT4s last week. Badger Man. Improving his position in the closing stages. Uh, Bowers Khalifa Bodal ahead of him. Eddie and Carmentalist leading the way. Uh, calls for ballast for Floppy Fox's Ferrari. Won't do him any good. He is flying in that Ferrari. Now well within a second. I did say roughly the penultimate lap by my calculations. We've got about three or four laps left for Floppy to work his magic. Uh, and another three or four laps left for Rogue to work his who is going to come out on top in this one? <laughs> Woo! Uh, any predictions in the chat? What do we reckon? Do we reckon Floppy can get the move done this time? Or do we think Rogue can hold this one off? I mean, the thing is, if I was Rogue at this point, I would probably just let Floppy go and take third position. No, never. <laughs> never. <laughs> never. You're the con for life. <laughs> Even if it's a six hour race, you defend. I <laughs> <laughs> love it. <laughs> And there you go, the absolute race driver in Chromex, he is all for full no defense. No mercy! No. Was nearly out of track again, he just saved the car. Oh wow, he cutting it close to that corkscrew. Really is having some fun in that thing tonight, isn't he? Uh, it makes the drive all the more impressive and it makes it all the more difficult to pick between him and ERT Samba for driver of the day. They really are making it impossible because big shout out, we're giving all the, the plaudits to Floppy Fox here for the... Uh, the combat drive he's putting in. Uh, let's not forget ERT Samba there. 16 seconds ahead of his fellow GT3 brethren. He is absolutely flying out there in that Porsche. It has been a phenomenal drive. Um, even with that early mistake, the recovery has been yeah, just impeccable. Uh, but it is Floppy Fox that we watched with bated breath. Less than five minutes to go on this one. Uh, will Floppy improve up to second? Uh, starting from pole position, even second, I don't imagine it's going to feel as good as it should, uh, given his starting position, but it'll certainly be, it certainly should, given the recovery that he's put in to get there. Coming into turn number six off to the half straight once again, no side by side for the GT3s, as we saw with Bodal and Khalifa in the GT4 Porsches early on, but coming into the court screw. No quarter given nor asked by either driver. Oh, and we've got the GT4 Audi just popping out the way there. That's Bowers. Uh, letting the podium battle make its way through. Four minutes left to go. So the bad news for Rogue... Fox is putting everything on, on, on the plate. He is using the track, the sand, the tarmac, whatever he has in reach. He is using every single thing of of the area of the track, not even the track itself, to reach him. And probably uh, there is uh, f maybe five, no, not five. Uh, three laps maybe left. Three laps, uh, yeah, three laps, three laps left. To go. So I suspect uh, ascend in the course queue somewhere around. Yeah. But that's the only place to, to try it because he is defending every single line. The only line that I'm noticing, Rogue is a bit. Uh, Permissive uh, is just a course queue. Right, okay. Uh, that will be the, the hotspot for this race. Uh, it certainly has been so far. Michael Gallo still giving up on Milden, by the way. Only six tenths 
uh, separate those. Ooh, floppy showing his hand. Or looking to see if he could force a defensive move. Potentially a mistake from Rogue. Rogue, a wily campaigner. Not going to fall for that one anytime soon. Again, Hovind look showing his headlights. And they take the curb. Now, the opposite to the way they did it on the last one. Uh, Rogue using a lot more of the exit curb there. Floppy. Looking for the big downhill run into the penultimate corner. Coming along past the pit entrance. Into the last corner. Is he going to try and get one up the inside? He really needs a monster exit here. Two laps left to go. Uh, Dexter beaming with pride in the chat. Bait drive by his endurance teammate Sam. But it really is. Uh, still well up the field there, but cannot take our eyes off this battle for second and third. Gallo, two tenths off of Milden. Will that position change hands once again in the closing stages? Let's have a look and see. Uh, the GT4s are... Ooh, they're all but decided, actually. Arno, uh, looking to get a counter move done on the Badger, man. A lot of light flashing going on, trying to distract the driver ahead of him. And I believe... That is the battle for the lead of the GT3s that's right behind them. Oh no, what a, what a, what a problem now, because neither of, of them will, will even try to to give yeah. some some effective space. Oh, there we go, the two GT4s both mm. fall like, ooh, the top of it. This was close. Oh, breathe in, so breathe out, there we go. <laughs> Whew, they made it. Let's give some camera type. Oh, Michael Gallo is off track. Oh, Michael Gallo. On the oh, sand pit. yeah, in the sand. Big gap then. So that position is not changing hands. Uh, that is for sure. Arno and Badger Man. Uh, they're still right in one another's pocket. Badger Man holding the cards at the moment. Floppy Fox trying to find his way past APX Rogue. Still uh, lap after lap. Only a minute left to go. Samba as well into this lap, but I th think this might be, this is, yeah, either the pull on the lap or the last lap, uh, we'll see, it's going to be very close with the time left on the board, Fox needs to get this move done if he is going to take second place, and ooh, getting a bit of dust there, we're going to use every millimetre of the track coming into turn number five, Getting that foot down as early as possible. Coming along the Rahal Street has a bit of a pickle there. Really is putting absolutely everything into this one. Turn at number six up the hill they charge. And it is towards the court street they go potentially. Actually, we should change back off that because I need to keep an eye and see if Samba is going to actually win the race on this lap. Samba coming into the last corner. Four seconds left on the clock. Three, two, one. The race timer has expired, and there is ERT Samba in the Porsche taking the checker flag after 42 action packed laps, which are still. Oh, the McLaren is in, uh, back on track, and Floppy Fox took the position because the Corrado is back on track. Oh! Putting an obstacle between the battle, and now the Ferrari is now in second place. <laughs> with Corrado. Wow. 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 What an end to that one then. So Corrado in the McLaren in the last corner. Uh, wrong place, wrong time as far as Rogue was concerned. Rogue demoted to third with Floppy Fox getting that second place as Milden. This held on to fourth. Michael Gallo in fifth. Camo Babo in sixth. Corrado in seventh. And it is Carmentalist who's come home to take the win. Uh, Arno did get very close to Badger Man, but didn't quite manage to get the overtake done. But as Carmentalist then wins once again, Eddie in second, Philip Bodal in third, Ear T Khalifa uh, in fourth, but was fifth. Got Badger Man in sixth, Arno coming home in seventh position. Thomas Cesar will cross the line in 15th place, and Rage Man finished in. 8th overall, sorry, for his class, but massive shout out uh, to ERT Samba, why won't that all go away, uh, that was an absolutely phenomenal drive um, from uh, both uh, class winners there, it has to be said. Yes, definitely.
uh, not from just from the leaders, but even from the podium sitters, because uh, we have Floppy Fox that made the race. Rogue that defended for 59.58 seconds, and just on the last turn lost the position on uh, on Fox. Uh, we have Carmetes that managed to get back, 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 get back from fifth position to first position. Eddie defended for like what 30 minutes, and uh, Philip that even if he lost the car on on the course view, he managed to to get back uh, to to a podium position. Indeed, sorry, I was just popping up while I was getting some uh, details on the screen there. Uh, but yeah, absolutely phenomenal race, as you say, uh, qualifying. Uh, gave us Floppy Fox, APX Rogue and Samba 1, 2, 3 and the race gave us Samba, Floppy Fox and Rogue so all chains there uh, same in the uh, qualifying for the GT4s it was Eddie Thomas and Carmentalist 1, 2, 3 uh, but of course Carmentalist rising to the top once again Eddie in second and Philip Bodal uh, making his way up to third so unbelievable drives uh, all round. As far as picking a driver of the day, that's uh, that is a tough one, my friend. I, um, yeah, I'm going to let you go first. Chromadex, what do you reckon, my friend? It's hard. Uh, <laughs> Honestly, I think uh, that the driver of the day. I want to give it to the race winner. Because he got very little uh, coverage from his race, but he actually spun on the on the course queue, lost. I think it was about 10, 15 seconds, and still managed to finish 17 seconds in front of Floppy Fox. Yeah. So I think he's gonna I'm gonna give it to Samba. Yeah, I'd say that's a good shout. I'd say that is a great shout, actually. Um... Ah, oh, you know what? It's really hard between. In the GT4s, I would say, between Carmentalist and Eddie. Eddie soaked up all that pressure, but Carmentalist did start in third and do exactly what he needed to do in uh, what can safely be said to be impressive fashion uh, with that 10, uh, 10, 16 second lead at the end. Uh, it's got to be Carmentalist. It's got to be Carmentalist. I'm sorry, everyone else, but yeah, Carmentalist... Uh, for me, once again, I would say uh, worthy of a nomination for Driver of the Day. Uh, so, congratulations. Uh, oh, and we've actually got... Uh, we've got a treat. I uh, don't think we have spoken here before, but he joins us here after a unbelievable out and, and fresh from a nomination for driver of the day from the all-knowing Chromadex as Mr. E as ERT's very own Samba uh, even manages to put up with Dex Dexter uh, in the passenger seat of the endurance team. How was that one for you, Samba? Oh, that went well, and um, of course I had a spin. I told my race was over. Indeed. But then... I was quickly catching up again to the like top four. Um, then one made a mistake, I was P3. Then Floppy, of course, made a pit stop. And I was sure that it was going to undercut me and Rock. Uh, but then the lap after me and Rock pitted. Uh, somehow, I came out of the pits in front of Rock. No idea how that happened. And then from there, I didn't make a mistake. Yeah, definitely, definitely didn't make a mistake after, like you say, that early door. I mean, as far as recovery drives go, that's got, I mean, that's surely got to be right up there with them. I mean, there's no way when you spun at the corkscrew, you thought to yourself, right, I'm still on for the race win here. No, there was absolutely no way. I was in a party with some ERT guys and I was I was saying, yeah, my race is over. I've, I've, I've done it again, like last week. Last week I spun a bit more. But, yeah. Um... Yeah, after that spin, I was like, I was so mad. I was not really sc screaming, but I was like really pissed at myself because I knew I had some decent pace. Yeah. And then um, I also think like the, some GT4s helped me. Of course, some ERT guys are in GT4 and they don't really, they like they leave the inside line always to me. So they will also help me. But um, yeah, I think I had some decent pace on this track. So I, I'm really happy. 
Yeah, I would say so. I would definitely say so. Uh, Chromedex, any questions for Samba? Um, I am actually at, I, I, I'll be honest, I'm at that this, the moment that does a mistake, then it's over. <laughs> it's, there, is no, there is no cure for it. And you just proved it wrong to me, that effectively, even, even if all, all, everything seems done, you can, you can re-emerge from that, literally, on the top. But actually, my question is a bit of a, of a lesson that I want to learn. How did you keep, uh, how did you keep the, no, how did you keep it, it was right. How did you keep the, the focus and the concentration to, to do everything like, like it, it, it didn't happen? Because I know myself and I know that I hit up a lot. And the moment I do a mistake, it's, it's over mostly not because I'm, I devastate myself, but because I'm too, too much into the heat. So I tend to do mistakes. So I, I'm actually just curious. How did you did you find the the focus, the concentration, and everything to to put everything together until the end? I mean, normally I'm a guy who gets frustrated really quick, so I lose focus really quick. But this time, I don't know what happened inside of my head, but something just said like, "Keep calm. You've got the pace. You can do this." And I basically just locked myself on my screen didn't look away once and yeah i, I think everyone everything went perfect after that okay I have to take notes <laughs> but yeah great win for uh for your race especially consider that you lost like 10 seconds so your gap was huge at the end even with time loss yeah. so great yeah, race thank you very much yeah, definitely a great race. We've got a Zandvoort double sprint race next week. How are you feeling ahead of that one? Um, the, n not really excited. I mean, I'm excited to race, but not for the track. Right, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's a tricky um, one. It is yeah. a tricky one, yeah. But at least it's not like a one-hour race, so... Yeah, the two thirty minuteers. Yeah, that'll be uh, that'll be a nice change up. Uh, yeah, so obviously you're looking forward to that track. You're not quite as confident on. Uh, good to get that two thirty minute. So I'm taking it. You are uh, all for the addition of the uh, the dual sprint races during the season. Yeah, yeah, it's it's very exciting. I think it's a nice change to just having a one hour race. And I haven't done like some sort of sprint race. It's also my first season in like one up ACC. Okay. Um, but I'm really excited for it, and I'm. I just hope I can show my pace again next week. Yeah, yeah, we are definitely looking forward to it as well. We're definitely looking forward to it as well. Uh, we will let you go for just now with congratulations uh, ringing in your ears once again, Samba. Absolutely phenomenal drive there, bud. Uh, congratulations. And uh, yeah, we will see you out on track next week. See you next week, guys. Cheers, buddy. Thank you. Um, we will, of course, Chromadex will come up with a question uh, for his driver of the day choice. Um, and my driver of the day choice uh, has made his way into the commentary box once again because that's what winners do. Uh, they come back. I've now spoken uh, to Car Mentalist more times in my commentary career than most of my co commentators. Uh, he wins that many races, <laughs> but that is exactly what he's done here again today. The qualifying session didn't quite go so well, but that race and pit stop strategy absolutely on the money once again. And we'll find Car Mentalist season number three, race two. Atop of the podium. How's that one for you, Car Metalist? Ah, uh, blimey. Um, well, hello once again. Uh, it's been a while. Hello. Um, <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> it has. Um, yeah, I think the, probably the first 35 minutes of that race is the most fun I think I've ever had on ACC. That was just such a fun race. And I, I usually, well, in the whole, when I was racing GC3s, I hated Laguna Seca with a passion. I thought it was awful, um, but it is a completely different track to drive in a GT4 car, and I now adore it. So <laughs> Nice. Um, that, yeah, that was really, really good. Great, great fun. And of course, yeah, just the best thing about it was just having such a, a fun and clean battle at the front of the field with Eddie. That was, that was amazing. Yeah, speaking of Eddie, it was such a tough choice for driver of the day between you and him because he really did soak up a like a lot of pressure I mean he was defending he defended against most of you guys uh, for that first stint um, 
So yeah, massive congratulations to Eddie for getting that second place. But again, huge congratulations to you, the GT4. I was quite surprised that you switched to the GT4. What was the motivation? Just to try something new, or are you like Chromadix and a bit of a closet GT4 fan? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd actually never driven a GT4 car before on a game before Snetterton. Disgusting. So, uh, Honestly, yeah, will you please I'm stop terrible. this? It's unbelievable. I'm, like, I'm done. I'm, I've got a Fanatec wheel for sale if anyone's interested. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, yeah, I I guess I'd had obviously, I'd won obviously the first season in the McLaren and then the Audi, and I didn't really know where to go after that. I didn't want to do another season in the Audi, but I didn't know what car to choose. So I thought I'm, I may as well just take a break for GT3 cars and do something a little bit different because I've never done it before. It's a new challenge, and um, yeah, I am very glad I've done it so far because the the Porsche, uh, the the Cayman is it's a beautiful car to drive. I absolutely lo absolutely love driving it. So um, yeah, I'm very glad I made the switch. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure your competitors aren't. I'm sure Melvin and the gang in <laughs> the GT3s are for the GT4 drivers. Not so much, not so much. Uh, but yes, the challenge has certainly risen to unbelievably well in that car. Uh, Chromedex, any questions for our GT4 race winner and uh, championship leader two races in? Um, Actually, uh, I want to ask it. I am a bit weak in this side of uh, uh, attack more than defend. Um... Where should like uh consider that Laguna Seca is a bit of uh is a bit of a problem in the overtaking. Mm. Uh were you planning some moves or you, were you, you were, I can't speak, I promise. <laughs> uh, uh were you just uh, trying to put Ed into a mistake uh, instead of trying an overtake? Uh, it was definitely more of trying to force him into a mistake. I very quickly realized in this race that that BMW is almost impossible to overtake. It is so... The, the annoying thing about the BMW is it's not great in the corners, which obviously there are a lot of here, but in the short straights, they are so fast in a straight line for a GT4 car, and they are incredible on the brakes. Um, so I think as Tom has proved in the start of the race as well, he was... I was in the middle of a BMW sandwich and every time I'd get a run on the back of Eddie, I would get almost overtaken by the BMW behind instead. So the, yeah, the BMWs were so, so, so difficult to pass. Um, so I was more than anything just trying to force Eddie into a mistake because I knew that if I got him offline and into the marbles, then he'd really, really struggle and I could overtake. But yeah, just a regular clean overtake, pretty much impossible on a BMW, which is um, going to be amazing when we come to Paul Ricard. I'm really looking forward to that with that back straight. That BMW is going to be, <laughs> it's gonna be like the, the GT 3.5 cars with how fast that car is in the straight line. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be, it's going to be quick. It's going to be quick. Uh, anything else, Chromadex? Uh, a great overtake on Tour 1. Uh, I actually saw it on... Uh, because I was watching the GT4 instead of the GT3 on the beginning, so mm. that was a very smooth move. I'm going effectively doing what I said in the in the beginning because I said just in the intro that it was smarter uh, to go on the outside just at the beginning instead of the inside. And yeah, actually, good move for it. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, then I think going around the outside is my thing. I can never do an overtake down the inside. I can only ever do them out around the outside for some reason, which makes me look better than I am. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, I I thought that as well. I I saw um, Eddie kind of moving to the middle and then the inside, so I thought that was going to slow down Thomas. So I thought, you know, I'm just going to stick it around the outside and hope for the best. And yeah, it paid off. So yeah, I think that may be the move from now on. Nice. And uh, we'll ask Samba, how are you looking forward to the uh, the dual sprint race next week at Zandvoort? It's a new challenge, yeah. I'm quite I'm quite intrigued as to how it's going to go down. Um, I think yeah, it's, it's going to be it's going to be interesting to see how it goes down. And I think on top of it being obviously a sprint race, I thought it, it was difficult enough for the GT3 cars to overtake the GT4s at Laguna. It's going to be horrible for the GT3 cars to get through the traffic at Zandvoort, so that teamed with having two races is going to be um, very interesting, but I'm looking forward to the challenge. Yeah, that'll be good, that'll be good. And uh, again, much like the GT4s that you'd never driven before, you could have kept that to yourself, really, but uh, <laughs> fine, it's fine, you didn't, not you shared, that's great. Uh, yeah, I'm sure it's a challenge you will rise to, so Carmentalist, once again, again, 
more congratulations ringing in your ears, but uh, the superlatives, I'm going to have to write a new thesaurus just for you. Uh, but congratulations once again, qualified in third, got himself back onto the top spot like winners do, top of the table after two races. Uh, congratulations once again, but cannot wait to see what you can do next week in the double sprint races. Brilliant. Thank you, guys. And, yeah, nice to talk to you once again. Probably, indeed. Well, hopefully talk to you next week. Yes, Fingers indeed. Crossed. Fingers crossed. Right. Fingers crossed. See you, guys. Take it easy, bud. There we go, then. That is Car Mentalist. Of course, Chromadix and I do have to do questions for the driver of the day. So my question for um, Car Mentalist will be, did your race strategy change uh, after qualifying in third when pole position looked to be on the cards? And Chromadix, do you have a question for Sam, my good man? Um, it's actually regarding the Porsche. How is it, uh, how, how much, uh, is it different uh, from a sh short track to a long track? In, in the sense that short track, I mean, Laguna Seca, Blend Sech, uh, this type of track that you can, you can lap in 120s and long track in, uh, like, uh, Paul Ricard, uh, maybe not Snetterton, but. I think uh, Spa, Baffles, these type of, of tracks. Because I actually never driven the Porsche except one time. So it's, I'm actually just curious. Nice, nice. There we go then. That is the questions for the driver of the day nominations of Car Mentalist and ERT Samba. I think we know who Dex Dexter is going to be voting for. Next week it is a double sprint race. That's right. Two 30-minute races will take place at Zandvoort. What? A track that is uh, not with the banked corner because uh, we've got real drivers here, not like these clowns at Formula One. Um, and then after that is Panorama Zano, Barcelona, Ulan Park, and Paul Ricard. Uh, massive thank you again to Mental Health Foundation, Next Level Racing, ERT, Vespertine, Free M Sim Racing. And, of course, SimGrid uh, for their sponsorships uh, and things like the Go and Get Tough Award and Direct Drive Stands. The Mental Health Foundation just supporting people in general, uh, which is fabulous and free sim with their sim racing gloves. Uh, another glorious one about season three well and truly underway two rounds in and it is only going to get better. You heard that here first. They may take note of the date and time. That is all we have time for, though. Uh, so thank you to everyone that took part in this evening's broadcast, all you people in the chat. Apologies for not managing to keep up with it all, but the on-track action was absolutely incredible. I will have a quick flick through the chat uh, as soon as this is done. I'm going to go back and uh, watch this with my tea. Uh, thank you to One Hub for having me back once again. Thank you to Laguna Seca for providing more on track action than Chromadix and I could keep up with. And of course, the biggest thanks of all to the man himself, Mr. Chromadix, more insightful co commentary in this broadcast than I've managed to muster in my entire career so far. Thank you once again, Christian. Thank to you and thank to uh, to our voices because that oh when Floppy Fox went off track was the loudest ever seen by humanity. <laughs> so it's astonishing we we were able to finish the race without getting uh, hospitalized by it. <laughs> indeed, <laughs> indeed, indeed, never fails to deliver. Uh, so there we go. Big thanks for Chromalix as well. Uh, we will see you all again. Make sure you get on uh, the social medias. By the way, the uh, the bots have been going wild for free M seven things. Uh, make sure you give one hub a follow on Twitter, uh, YouTube, uh, here on uh, Twitch as well, and uh, get those notifications switched on. We will be back same time, same place next week uh, for a double header, two thirty minutes around Zandvoort. You lucky people. Until then, y'all take it easy, stay safe. Good night. <laughs>